Today we're gonna talk about handling large washes in watercolor. What's up friends, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. Today I wanna to talk to you about handling large washes in watercolor. And this topic turns extremely crucial, especially with watercolor. Uh, if you compare it to other painting media, such as oils, um, acrylics, pastels, gouache, with watercolor, it has the most sensitivity to how fluid the work is so if you take your time and a part of the wash dries up you're in trouble you'll get funny blossoms you'll get uneven washes it's just not gonna look as good as it should uh, or as fluid as it should okay so this topic is extremely uh, important to watercolor painting it does apply to some other fields as well but this one uh, in particular so what i'm gonna do is give you um two kind of mental tips uh so that you can take that skill to the next level and then I'm going to give you four uh, practical advice that you can actually go and apply, okay? Uh, I have a band-aid here because I have a small cut. <laughs> That's, it's a funny place to have a band-aid, but in any case, let's get started. I have a cheat sheet here. So we're going to start with um, the first advice I can give you is to have a very clear understanding of the area that you're going to work on, okay? So when you look at your painting, uh, you need to know exactly what you're going to paint. And the, I think the main idea here uh, is to know where the highlights are going to be. Because basically on the first wash, you want to cover everything up uh, except for the highlights, okay? Or if you're doing maybe negative shaping, negative painting around larger shapes, you want to know exactly where those shapes are and what you're going to avoid. You, it's almost like you want to look at the thing you paint and visualize what it's going to look like when you're going to paint around it okay this is really important so that's the first advice now the second advice i want to give you and this is purely mental as well is don't sweat the first wash too much okay um it's still got to be put into perspective and it's not that bad if you get some blossoms here and there it really depends on the location as well if if something is going to stay light for example you do one wash over the sky and the land so the sky is going to stay light it's better to um have that area even okay but if you mess up some some areas in between maybe between the horizon line and the skies and you get a bit of blossoms it's not that bad okay the most important thing is that you get it as even as possible okay so so let's put all of this video basically in perspective and know that with time it's gonna come some washes are really complex you need to do a lot of complicated negative painting around shapes you need to keep uh, an even ground I'm gonna talk about that in just a moment so in any case don't sweat it uh, so now let's move on to the four practical advice and the first one I want to give you is working top to bottom using the bead and loading the top of the painting okay um, and let me um, elaborate on that point so first off working top to bottom when you're working on a level or on, on a, a bit of a an angled surface is important because the water is going to come down. Now, the important part in this is you want to load up the top part of the wash. This is extremely important. Once again, you want to go over it a few times with the brush, making sure it's really well covered up, um, making sure that it creates a bead from the top, from the get, okay? Uh, because what's going to happen is, I'm going to talk about it in just a moment, You're, you may have to split the wash for a few areas and then you have to keep your attention on the right side on the left side you want to have that bead from the start okay so you want to load up that top brush not skimp over it and really make sure it's fully loaded and you get the bead okay so that's the first one now the second one is moving evenly from top to bottom so what i mean by that is let's imagine we have a shape here and i'm gonna crop in um videos of me doing it because i want you to understand it um really well so you sometimes have to split your work around different shapes. Now you don't want to go on the right too much and then on the left stay at the top. You want to keep it always even and leveled, okay? From top to bottom. Keep a, a horizontal line going there, okay? Now you can move a bit downwards here, then move a, a bit here and, you know, work and pace yourself in the way that you see fit. But generally, overall speaking, you want to you wanna make sure that you're moving at a, at a similar rate all across the horizontal area okay so that's the second advice now the third one um, and this is something that was quite a discovery for me is I feel a bit dumb for not realizing it earlier is if you're gonna do um, edges okay so if you want to blend some edges as you go along with the wash maybe you're painting around the highlight on the face here so you want to blend that edge between the shadow and the light 
um, if you're gonna do something like this, use another brush, okay? You have one brush that's loaded with your paint, and then you have one brush meant for blending. So you, you're moving down the wash with one brush, and then you use the other one, you wipe it on the towel, make sure it's dry, and then you uh, blend the edges. And this one is still loaded, because what, what I used to do, and I got this tip originally from Steve Mitchell from The Mind of Watercolor, he just mentioned it in some video, and I'm like, bam, <laughs> I should have done that a long time ago. And um, what would happen is I'll work with one brush, get the wash done, clear, clean it in the water, wipe it on the towel, blend with it, and then I have to reload it again. It wastes so much time and you don't have that time if you want to work on a large wash, okay? I already did a video on even washes in general, so check it out. I'll put a link somewhere in the description box on the sides, but now I'm, I'm referring more to large complex washes, okay? So you want to make sure that you're using two or more brushes as necessary for blending. Now the final tip is to make use of wet and wet. So you have the bead, you know exactly where your layer is going to end. That's cool, you've loaded it enough so you have some time to relax and take a look at what you already filled and use wet on wet on that. Okay, so many times you'll start covering the surface and then if you want to get something in the very far distance, you're going to put it in while the wash is still a little wet and then slowly merge it to where the wash is dry and get a sharper edge and then you play with lost and found edges, for example. So you want to look around, see where you want to darken things up or, you know, it really depends on the type of work you do and if it's a portrait or a landscape or whatever it is, you may need to vary the color, but all of that doesn't matter. I just want you to have in mind that while the bead is there, you have the possibility of reworking areas as long as they're still wet and if you're afraid they're gonna dry up quickly use one of these it's really cheap and it's really helpful and um, I really recommend having something like this uh, handy always I need to get one for my uh, on-location work so in any case this is it uh, these are the advice two mental for practical I'm gonna probably put them floating around here somewhere so you can see them all together uh, I really hope this video was helpful to you uh, I tried cropping in the, the the recordings of me doing what I'm actually explaining here just so that to make it clearer um, and this is it let me know your thoughts in the comment below uh, I'm really wondering is this something that you find yourself struggling with uh, is it something that's uh, that you find complex hard uh, to get even washes. I'm really curious to know. I had a lot of trouble with this in the beginning uh, for, for maybe for a main reason that's a little different, not necessarily technically, but because I wasn't focused enough on knowing what I'm going to do with the paint. So I didn't start painting with a full understanding of exactly what and where I'm going to paint. Um, so maybe getting some clarity can really help and go a long way as well. And of course, there were some technical issues, some skill-related issues that I had to work on as well. So in any case, this is it. I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube and follow me also on Instagram and Snapchat where I share tons of daily updates um, of the different works I'm doing. And I will see you again in another video really soon.